everybody. Welcome to our latest edition of Science Bites. I am Miss Nicole with Bloomfield Public Library and today we are going to be talking about the science of shrinky dinks. What is a shrinky dink? When I was a kid, everybody had shrinky dinks. Shrinky dinks are actually made using a very flexible piece of thin plastic. And this is an example of one of those sheets. And this kind of flexible, thin sheet of plastic is known as polystyrene. Another term for it, um, you might see some um, plastic food containers from the cafeteria that are marked as recycled plastic number six. That is also polystyrene. And polystyrene is also commonly known as the memory plastic. And there's a reason for that. Now, we have talked about polymers many times before in Science Bites, and this is another example of a real world use of polymers. So in order to get this thin sheet of plastic, what scientists or, or um, manufacturers do is they put all the ingredients for that polystyrene in a big pot and they superheat it. So they make it super hot and melty and gooey. And what that does is it takes our jumble of polymers that are kind of nested together and curled up like slinkies and it actually smooths them out and stress starts to stretch them out as they heat. And then it's put through these special rollers that stretch the plastic even further, make it much thinner and take those polymers that are jumbled up in a knot and pulls them tight and lays them flat. And then there's a final step where they put those sheets of plastic through rollers that are are super cooled. So as soon as that plastic goes through those rollers, it freezes those polymers into those straight and flat positions. And that is how we get these flexible, very thin sheets of polystyrene. When we do a shrinky dink project, what we're doing is we're actually taking that super thin, flexible piece of polystyrene plastic we're heating it again, and when we heat it, it has a muscle memory. It remembers what it used to be. Those polymers wanna go back into that crumpled up, jumbled state. So as soon as we heat it, that plastic shrinks up and becomes thicker and smaller. It goes back, all those polymers go back to their original state. And that's how we get our tiny little shrinky dinks. So I'll show you, just in case you've never seen a shrinky dink, this is an example of um, a design I did earlier. So I cut a flower shape out of a piece of that polystyrene plastic. You can see it's this flexible little plastic. And when I baked it, after coloring it, I got something this size. So we went from this size, you can see my outer outline, to that super tiny size. And where this is flexible, my shrinky dink is a lot thicker and it is not at all flexible, it's solid. And so that's gonna be our project today. So for our project, I'm going to make sure that everybody gets a few of these pre-designed um, fun little, little um, images that you can color in and shrink down for your shrinky dink. But I will also make sure everybody gets a sheet of our polystyrene plastic. And that sheet can actually be cut into four pieces. So you can cut it in half once, like I did here, and then cut it in half again, cut this sheet in half. So you will actually get four projects out of this one sheet that you can design on your own. These polystyrene sheets have two sides. One side is rough, and you, you'll hear it as I rub my finger over it. It's got sort of a rough matte edge to a uh, side to it. The other side, is shiny and you can kind of see the light on it. And if I rub my finger, you really can't hear it because it's the shiny side. And there's, there's two different ways you can use these sheets. If you wanted to color in using colored pencils, you would want to make sure you use the rough side. If you wanted to color using um, permanent magic markers, you would use the shiny side. And we are going to do markers. So we are only going to use the shiny side for these pre-made projects, it's not as noticeable, but there is also a rougher side, and you'll feel it if you rub your finger on it, and there's a smoother side. And again, I'll show you with the light. You can see the light hitting it. And again, you don't hear that roughness. So if you're not sure, just rub your finger on it, and you'll be able to tell which side is which. 
But since we're using markers for all of our projects, we are always going to use the shiny side of our polystyrene. Now I have mine on a white background just so it makes it easier for everybody to see it. I kind of like this little sheep or ram, so I thought I would color that one in to show you. And you can see on the designs they've given us, there's this dotted line around the edge. You are going to actually cut along that dotted line. And there is a, a, a circle up here. The reason we have a circle is that if you wanna punch a hole in your project so you can attach a little chain to it, um, so maybe you wanna dangle it off a book bag later on, you need to punch out that hole before we put our project in the oven and we shrink it down. And we do have hole punches at the library, so if you don't have that at home, color in your projects and get them ready, and then bring them into the library and we can punch those holes for you before you, before you bake your projects. But I'm gonna quick show you, I'm just gonna pick a few different marker colors here. Let's say my sheep's horns are, we'll do like orange. Make some little orange rugs. So I'm just coloring in on the shiny side. I'm gonna give him a little bit of orange and maybe also a little brown. You can design these any way you want. And now, like I said, we're gonna actually cut out this shape I think before I even cut it, I will do the hole punch. So if you've never seen a hole punch, this is what one looks like. It's gonna actually pop a hole right, right, right in the plastic. So I'm gonna line it up. Let's see here. I'm gonna turn it around this way so I can see it better. Get it lined up, I'm gonna punch that out. There we go. Now I've got a hole ready to go in my project and now I'm just going to cut out the shape. Now, some of you may need help cutting out your project. Um, it can be a little trickier to cut out from plastic compared to paper, but that's up to you. You can also, if you don't want, if you want to cut it out exactly against the project without this clear boundary, you can do that too. It's a little easier to follow the dotted lines because they've made some sort of smooth, rounded shapes around the project. You don't have to cut out those tiny legs that you can see at the bottom of our sheet. Just one last little bit and then voila, my project is cut out. And we will, we will shrink this up and I will show you that in just a little bit. But now I'm gonna show you how you can also design a project of your own. So here again, I have my, um, my plain piece. Remember, there's a rough side and that is the side we do not wanna use. And this is the shiny side. You can see the light sticking on it. That, we wanna make sure we use the shiny side for our markers. Now I'm gonna keep it very simple. You can be very simple or you can be very fancy. You can do some Pokemon. I, I've, I have done a pseudo wudo in the past. Those of, you, those of you who know me know I love pseudo wudo. But I think I'm gonna keep it simple. I think I'm gonna do just a cloud. And maybe, just because I can, I'm gonna give him a red top hat. And I'm going to, I'm also going to punch a hole in him. And I'm just going to do it right in the middle of his hat. I'm gonna do it right here. So now I've got my hole. And this one also has to be cut out. You don't wanna keep, you could keep it in just a giant square shape, but that's not as fun as cutting it out. So I will cut this one out too. So you wanna make sure that you set your oven temperature to 325 degrees Fahrenheit, and you're only going to need to bake your shrinky dinks for about two to three minutes. You are going to see your shrinky dink start to shrink up and he will curl up. His sides will curl up like a little cup. And then as you continue to heat, it will flatten back out. And that's when you know the process has finished. After that curl up, he will flatten out and then you can pull them out of the oven 
and um, just let them cool for a little bit. Now I have just a regular cookie sheet here and I've just put a small piece of tin foil here. You can also use parchment paper. And all I'm going to do is, is put my shrinky dinks on my foil. Now because we colored on the shiny side, we wanna make sure the, si the shiny side is facing up. So again, you can touch it with your finger. I can see even from the way it catches the light, that's my shiny side on that one. And this feels rough and this is shiny. So again, make sure those shiny, the shiny side is facing up. Put it on a piece of foil or parchment paper. And then these are gonna go into your 325 degree oven just for two to three minutes. Okay, it's time for me to take mine out of the oven. And here we go. Now you may find you want to use a piece of parchment paper and a glass with a flat bottom. If you're not sure they're, they're actually flat, you can put that parchment paper down and just use that glass to make sure they're definitely flat. Just press on it a little bit. But then it just needs a couple of minutes to cool. And as promised, here are my now tiny shrinky dinks shrunk up in the oven. Now, if we look at the sheep in particular, we can see this nice colorful side. That was our shiny side where we colored. And if we flip over the sheep, you can tell that it's not as colorful on this one side. That was that rough side where we didn't color. And this was our colorful side where all our colors are. And you can see how thick it got too. It gets about nine times thicker once it shrinks. So originally, this was our sheep. He shrank down to this size, and you can see how totally thin and flexible our polystyrene was when it was in its, its super thin phase. And when it shrank back to its original size, it got very thick, and it is not at all flexible. It is solid. Now I have one more thing to show you for your project. I am also going to give everybody these nice little easy chains um, in case you want to um, dangle your, your projects off of a book bag or uh, maybe you want to give them as a gift to someone. If, if you like earrings um, and you want to buy and you have some jewelry making things at home, if you make these even tinier, well, you could keep them this size too. It depends what kind of earrings you like. But if you like things tinier, you could um, hook these on to a dangly earring backing and they could be gum earrings or you could attach them to a bracelet. It is totally up to you what you want to do. But it is important, remember, that you punch this hole before you melt your shrinky dink in the oven. So you're gonna take this, this end without the, the catch and you're gonna stick it through the hole in your project, just like so. There we go. So now I've got it like this. And the way these work is that you've got, let me see if I can get it in focus. You've got this open area right in the middle and you're gonna catch the end of the chain there and pull it straight and tight. So I've got it caught and now I'm just gonna pull it tight and it catches and it holds it tight. So now I can dangle this off of a book bag or I can do whatever I want with it, hang it off the fridge. It's up to me and up to you. And that is our entire project for the day, the science of shrinky dinks. And now you have a super fun project to do after school or on a nice quiet weekend, or maybe you're snowed in, which that's that time of year where we get that kind of messy weather. Now I will have kits at the library at our atrium location. I will also make sure that everybody gets an assortment of permanent markers in their bag. I may not be able to give you every color under the rainbow, but you should be able to get at least four or five different colors. So when you do this at home, if you have, mar you wanna make sure you use per permanent markers at home, not, wa not um, water-based markers like some of the Crayola markers are. So they need to be permanent markers or Sharpies or you can also use colored pencils. Just remember, if you use colored pencils, use the rough side of our polystyrene sheets, not the shiny side. The shiny side is for the markers, the rough side is for colored pencils. And if you do do colored pencils, you wanna make sure that the rough side with the colored pencil coloring is facing up in the oven. So whichever side you color on, that's the side that faces up in the oven. So as always, you can ask me any questions. I'm at the atrium, feel free to visit. Um, you can email me, you can call our, our library and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Swing by and pick up the kits. This is a super fun project. I hope you enjoy it and I will see everybody next month on our next Science Bites.
Bye for now.